Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto currency and digital assets, and yeah, bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, great stuff. First up, Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz urges investors to buy more gold than Bitcoin, which is kind of confusing, but he'll explain why. Also, there's going to be a fork of the Brave browser, and why I find this totally ridiculous, and there's no reason for this whatsoever. Also, the Celsius CEO chases down the bank. And there's some more scary IRS tax news, which your taxes are due July 15th if you live in the US. We'll go over all that quickly, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So first up, Bitcoin is down 2%. Everything's down actually. Ethereum's down, uh, XRP's down, shocker. Bitcoin Cash, Cardano is down massively, uh, 7%, even though it's up 25% for the seven day. But uh, over the last 24 hours, everything is down because what goes up invariably will come down. So I know yesterday we had actually talked about FOMO and I had told you that even me who, have, who has been in this space for now going on three years, uh, even I fall victim to FOMO and I start to think about, you know, hey, should I get in now because everything's blowing up and I don't wanna miss the boat and I get all anxious. But <clears throat> in all honesty, these are the emotions that we need to control if we're going to be solid study investors. And I told everybody this uh, yesterday, so I'm hoping that you actually listened to that and didn't actually fall in yesterday because right now you'd be down, uh, you know, uh, depending on which position you have, you might be down pretty uh, by a lot. So re remember, it's all about the steady hand, dollar cost average, don't take huge risks, and over time, you'll win. That's it. So let's break into today's stories. So first up, Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz talks about, hey, you need to have more gold than Bitcoin and explains why. So when I first saw this, I was like, this is probably just a clickbaity title and it's going to, uh, you know, totally do the opposite. But in actuality, it's the truth. So it, it starts off by saying gold is aiming for a new all time high after going past $1,800. So I can tell you who's happy about that. My man, Peter Schiff, who is a serious gold bug. And you know, he's going to be talking about this on Twitter. I'm not going to look up, look up his account, but I'm sure he's gloating. Gold is now approximately 6% shy of its lifetime high. That's pretty uh, amazing considering that uh, gold's been around for thousands of years. Bitcoin, by contrast, is still struggling to get a foothold above 10K. Mike Novogratz believes the top crypto will outperform gold in the future. However, he cautions in investors against putting a majority, and that's the key word here, a majority of their wealth in Bitcoin instead of gold due to the crypto's extreme volatility. Now, here's the thing. I don't believe you should put the majority of your uh, wealth into Bitcoin either. I mean, we never know what's going to happen. It's a very, it's a highly volatile market. I remember there's a story back in 2016 or 2017, somebody sold their house and put it into Bitcoin right before the bull market. If you think you can time it, then go right ahead. But I'm here to tell you the chance of that happening are very low. And that's not to, that's not to mention that did that person uh, sell at the top when it was around 20,000 or do they write it all the way down to when it was 3,000? Who knows? But the big thing is that you should never put uh, the majority or all your eggs into one basket. That is a recipe for disaster, some type of uh, allocation of funds. And and when I hear about these stories, I'm like, why don't these financial analysts and, and investors and institutions, you know, start to recommend to their clients like, hey, Pete, uh, you know, there's a lot of different problems going on out there with the economy and the different things with the Fed printing crazy amount of money. Why don't we do a hedge and we take, uh, I don't know, one to 5% of your portfolio and put it into Bitcoin and digital assets? Because uh, year over year, they have been kicking the tar of everything else. Sure, that sounds good. If every analyst or every advisor to told that to their customers, their clients, uh, we would have a multi-trillion dollar uh, market cap. And it would just make sense because why wouldn't they do that? So I'm waiting for that to happen. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about uh, why it is going to happen uh, sooner rather than later. Anyhow, so Mike's talking about having more gold. He's an um, ex-Goldman Sachs partner, Mike Novogratz. I didn't know he was a ex-Goldman Sachs partner, so hey, good for him. He's a well-known Bitcoin bull. Earlier this year, he predicted that the flagship crypto will reach an all-time high by the end of the year. So we'll see if that happens. Hopefully he's right. The Bitcoin advocate acknowledges that it is still quite hard for most people to buy the cryptocurrency. But there are several experts currently working on making it easier. And when this finally happens, Bitcoin will be the creme de la creme. But 
when I when I first heard Mike say that, he said it's very difficult for people to buy Bitcoin. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, you can just use uh, Gemini or use my new favorite app, Voyager. And uh, it's like super fast. You just click a button, boom, done. What are you talking about? But again, that is my own ignorance uh, because I don't realize that it's not just about me. It's about other people. And uh, when Mike uh, talks about this in the Unchained podcast, he makes it uh, crystal clear what he's talking about. So this was actually a couple of weeks ago. He was on uh, Unchained podcast, which is fantastic. I've already subscribed and liked it. If you uh, have an opportunity, definitely watch this interview. It's fantastic. Um, but he's going to lay it out in the next two minutes about why it's so difficult, uh, why financial analysts are going to FOMO and they're waiting for the price confirmation and then it's all going to blow up. So take a listen. And this, this is an adoption story. Um, and if Bitcoin was easy to buy, it would be a lot higher. And so we've dealt with a few hedge funds that are buying it, right? They've got to go through all the due diligence for their funds. And, and you know, it's a two to four week process for their for their back office to feel comfortable. Um, and so it's not like pick up the phone and call. Uh, it, then they got to usually talk to their board. Hey, we're going to buy crypto for the first time. The other, I think, new group of buyers that are coming, they're not here yet. Uh, the financial advisor community is giant, right? If you think the, the bulk of the wealth in America and in Europe is not owned by Gen Z or millennials, though they'd like it. It's owned by, you know, Gen X and baby boomers. Uh, and older, uh, you know, the 50 to 80 year olds, uh, they don't have bread wallets or Coinbase wallets uh, or Venmo apps, uh, you know, and so getting the financial advisors to feel comfortable to then sell it to them is a process at Galaxy that we're really working hard on. Uh, that's being amped up in a big way, not just with us, with others as well. And so I think in the next few months, you're going to see a lot of FAs putting their clients into this. And also, Mike, as you know, is the whole the structure of this is everyone's got their eye on it. And the, if the price moves up, everyone gets FOMO and has to get involved. And that's the in, at institutional level now. Yes. So if it goes up further, the more it goes up, the more the market cap goes up, the more they can justify it to their trustees and the more people get involved. So I think we're at that tipping point of a virtuous cycle that can continue for a while. But we just need to get through these levels first. But I think essentially every institution, every RAA is almost kind of short the upside calls. Not not really. I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of people who are. But really what it's all about is people don't have it and they need to get it. But they wait for the price for confirmation. And that's it. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't introduce that. That was uh, Raul Powell. And he is a macroeconomist. And he's been featured on the on the channel a couple of times. But uh, smart guy. I mean, all smart people here on this panel. And uh, it just makes sense, right? Uh, they are waiting for the price confirmation. They're waiting to go in heavy, hopefully heavy. And then just like Mike had talked about the financial planners, they are the ones that are really going to push this this whole next bull run, I think. And they're going to push it onto their, their clients. And I think it's going to be a big thing. So let's jump back. Okay, moving on, it states, regardless, the Wall Street veteran, Mike, thinks investors should buy more gold and less Bitcoin because of the level of risk associated with the big price swings in crypto, he states. And so my sense is Bitcoin way outperforms gold. But I will tell people to have a lot less Bitcoin than they do gold just because of the volatility. So he's talking about short-term versus long-term. Long-term Bitcoin, and I think a lot of other digital assets, I think... Um, different digital assets are going to outperform Bitcoin massively uh, over time. But uh, the safest bet in cryptocurrency, I think, is Bitcoin. To finish up, it talks about <clears throat> Bitcoin rally from a shade under 4,000 to 10.4 in just uh, two months, right before the block having in May. But since then, the strong momentum has faltered and Bitcoin has been on a uh, several instances failed to keep its head above 10K. And right now, uh, we just saw what it is, right around 9,200. The crypto's correlation with the S&P 500 index has grown stronger and has tainted its image as a digital safe haven asset. So again, depending on you know where you're at and as far as what you believe or what other people believe as far as um, uh, Bitcoin and the correlation with S&P 500, we have seen a more, I wouldn't say a massive amount, but more uh, institutions getting involved. I mean, we have everything from, from Grayscale, 
uh, Fidelity, uh, which has like seven trillion assets under management. You got TD Ameritrade. You got Paul Tudor Jones, that uh, investor legend, who's putting a, uh, you know, two percent of his whole portfolio into Bitcoin futures. Um, you've got a lot of different players coming into the game. So the good news and the bad news is that the good news is they're bringing all their money. The bad news is they're bringing all their shenanigans. And one of those shenanigans that they have, or the tricks up their sleeve, is like, hey, if something starts to uh, go south in a uh, a deal that they're doing on the traditional market, they're going to need liquidity. And guess what? Uh, cryptocurrencies and digital asset markets never close. So if they want to pull some money out, guess what? They're going to do it. And there's a problem when the S&P goes down, they got to cover their shorts, their long, what, what do they have to cover? What do they, they have to do? They're going to pull it out of one place, which is where we are at. And that's a problem. But uh, that is exactly what it's, what's going to happen. I think it's going to be more correlated as time goes on. However, I will say this. It may happen or on the flip side is smart investors like me and you they're going to look at that and go, you know what? There's a there's a tremendous amount of upside. Uh, I'm not going to trade this. I'm not going to give this away. I'm going to have my position on something else, whether that be another stock. And if things go south, I'll sell something. But I'm going to keep Bitcoin. I'm going to keep my Ethereum. I'm going to keep my chain link. I'm going to keep all these different digital assets because I know they're going to go up massively. And I'm just going to hold. So that could be one of those situations where when people start to realize the value of where they're at, I think they're going to hold on to more things. But in the short term, I don't see it going that way. Anyhow, moving on. In his interview, Novogratz pointed out that the current economic climate where central banks across the globe are printing insane amounts of money is perfect for assets like gold. And it's the same reason that the bullish prognosticator loves Bitcoin. And in that same uh, interview, in the Unchained one, uh, she asks, uh, the interviewer asks, so what is the catalyst? What is going, what is your message to all your investors? Is it because of the quantitative easing and the uh, lax position for the for the central banks? And Mike Novogratz says, bingo, that's the only thing, or that is the one major driving force of what we're pushing on to our investors. Because once they start to get into that, they realize, hey, this is a pretty good asset to get into. And it's the same type of argument with gold. So it makes sense. And lastly, it states, and perhaps more importantly, Bitcoin has noticeably outperformed gold in terms of year-to-date uh, gains. What could possibly stop it from continuing its great ride in the coming months or years, which is uh, the most ominous sentence I've probably read uh, in a long time, so I don't know. I will say this. Uh, lastly, uh, I always think that uh, in 2020, moving forward, the new savings account should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. That just makes sense to me. I mean, if you're one of those people who says, you know what, I'm just going to keep fiat and my savings account. Well, good luck because it goes down 2% every every uh, year. So uh, you're just losing money. Uh, make the money work for you. Put it into something that actually can appreciate. Gold, silver, Bitcoin looks like a safer bet for me. Anyhow, let's move on. Next up, Brave Browser Fork makes a bold move setting legal pressure. And I got to tell you, this is a disappointing article. Anyhow, blockchain browser formerly known as Braver, which originally forked from the open source Brave Browser, rebranded itself to Bold Browser. Ugh. Braver Browser launched in June following reports of Brave auto-filling the company's affiliate link into searches for certain crypto exchanges like Binance and Coinbase. So we covered this uh I don't know, two, three weeks ago. And it was the same thing. So there was some type of article that popped up when people would go to sign up for Binance and Coinbase, it would pre-fill it with the affiliate link for uh, the Brave browser. And so if you were, if you had never had Coinbase or Binance and you just typed in coinbase.com and you went there and you signed up, it would, if you're using the Brave browser, it would self-fill it so where uh, Brave would get that affiliate commission. However, I will say this, for every affiliate link that I have, which if you're looking to find what I use and what I recommend or don't recommend, in the description of every one of my video, it's gonna, there's gonna be an exchange fee, it's gonna look like this. When you click on that, it's gonna take you to a Google spreadsheet, and these are all the different exchanges and wallets that I've ever used or are using or uh, actually have gotten rid of. So I give you all my recommendations and uh, the different fee structures and uh, different things that are good and bad of everything. Right now, I'm pretty uh, heavy into Celsius and Voyager. I think those guys, are they got things locked in. Really good stuff. Um, but on all of mine, not all of them, there's some that don't have an affiliate link like uh, Abra and Uphold. I don't. But on Celsius, like if you click on this, um, so you'll get $25 in Bitcoin if you use my affiliate link. 
and I get $25. Same thing with Voyager. So the same thing here for uh, this Brave browser, like they will get $10, but on every affiliate link that I used to use for Coinbase uh, and for Gemini and all the rest of them is that I would get 10, you get 10. So the same thing should happen for Brave. So really, if you think about it, like they're actually doing you a favor. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong here in the description or in the uh, comments, but uh, if they pre-fill it and it go 10 bucks goes to them, and 10 bucks goes to you, wouldn't you just want the 10 bucks? Or would you be like, no, on principle, I don't want that $10 because you know you, you shorted me. But guess what? It's a business. You got to make money. So, I mean, if they do that, they do that. Uh, and that's it. And then there was different things that, that it came out about, uh, you know, it wasn't being done and this and that. I, I don't really honestly care if Brave had pre-filled it and they got 10 bucks and I got 10 bucks. I, I was, for me, I don't care. But uh, apparently some people do, and they got all uh, in a tizzy about it, and they said, you know what, we're going to X this out, and we're going to make our own. We're going to do a hard fork, and we're going to make our own um, uh, browser and go from there. So, sure. Anyhow, going on with the story. The Braver team said it had removed Brave's referral link injection, and the full release was going to delete all adware, including the basic attention token. So if you don't know, uh, I use the Brave browser all the time for all the videos for Digital Asset News. I love it. It's great. I, uh, when you click on a new tab, I mean, you can turn on the Brave Rewards and you can surf the internet and you'll see ads. But they pay you in basic attention token, which is awesome, right? Um, if you want to do that. I don't do that because I got a lot of stuff going on. So I just need, I, I can't get back time. And right now, this thing saved me two hours. So I don't know what else can do that. So I'm happy with that. Here's the thing. For every browser that you use, I mean, you're not getting paid to do anything. I, I know you're not doing that on Chrome. I definitely, I can tell you right now, not on Internet Explorer or Edge or any other thing that you're using, you're not getting paid to be seeing ads. So uh, like this one, I love it. It's great. And then you get, you have the option. You have the option to turn it off or turn it on. So with this new Braver browser, um, you don't have that option. They're just going to not pay you at all, which, I mean, that's what they want to do. Sure. So anyhow, Brave co-founder uh, and CEO Brendan Ike. I think that's how you say it, Ike, Ike, tweeted that the forked project, which they're talking about the Braver browser, will have to rename and also run a bunch of services and updates on their own. He said no free writing on our services, on our servers. So going down to the last part, another potential fork is incoming. Additionally, the contributor to the story told Cointelegraph that they are planning to build a new browser by forking ungoogled Chromium rather than Brave. Not because of legal issues, but because the original code is a bit messy and difficult to maintain slash update. The developer said, we plan to make a bold, or to make bold, a Chromium-based browser that contains the features that people expect from privacy respecting ad blocking browsers with next generation integrations such as Web3 and IPFS without any advertising programs or token reward schemes. Good luck with that. I mean, maybe people don't want the tokens or the option. They're not going to give you the option. And that's what they want to do. So as I was reading this, I just got to tell you, I, I see this all around. And I'm, I'm not going to go into politics or any of that stuff because this is not a political channel. This is all about digital assets. Um, but I don't know what happened to working together and having an argument, but working it all out and going, you know what, we want this, and we want that, and somehow compromising and meeting in the middle. But it seems like nobody can do that anymore. And uh, I, this is the same type of thing. I'm like, why do you have to fork everything uh, to get what you want? Can you work together a little bit better to make things work? But it just doesn't seem to work that way. And um, I always think, like, isn't that one of the points of, you know, peer-to-peer -peer decentralization? Just to kind of, you know, hash it all out and make it work because that's where we are in this community. It just doesn't happen. I'm tired of forks and I'm tired of projects, uh, you know, forking and forking and forking. Bitcoin went to Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash to Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin Tomato, whatever it is. Uh, I just don't get it. Now, let me know in the comment section what you think, but uh, I'm getting tired of seeing all this stuff and uh, I hope it actually uh, works itself out. So let's move on. Next up, this is the CEO of Celsius, uh, Mashinsky, and he just did this quick little video where he's just running to catch the bank. I thought it was funny because I'm like, how many CEOs are out there running in the rain uh, just doing YouTube videos? It just, it's crazy. We go ahead and rain or shine, running up, down. Right. Yeah. I guess this is in front of me. Let's see if I can catch up with her. 
The bank has great stamina. Can Celsius win? Get in front of the bank. It's definitely down to the last half mile. The bank is giving up. Here we go. Celsius in the lead. I mean, you get it. It's pretty funny. So, like, he he does these videos with, with his wife, and, and he calls uh, his wife the bank. And uh, it's just, I'm like, who does that? I mean, who does that? So, if you don't know, like, I've, uh, I, thanks to my subscribers, I actually took a look at Celsius. Because I, I, mean, I get so many comments, like, have you checked out this coin? Have you have you checked out shoe coin? Have you checked? And I, but I had so many requests for uh, Celsius and V Chain and Voyager that I had to look at them. And uh, I got to tell you, it's it's pretty impressive type of stuff. So if you don't know what Celsius is, uh, it is essentially a wallet where you can buy cryptocurrencies. But everything you store in your wallet, you get interest off it. And you don't have to stake it. You don't have to hold it in for like uh, months or years or whatever else. It's just however long you hold that that cryptocurrency in that wallet. Uh, you will get paid for uh, an interest rate, which is pretty cool. And then in this little this little clip, it's only uh, two minutes long. I'm gonna let, or actually a minute and a half. This is um, Alex Mashinsky. He's the CEO. One you just saw right there, and he's just gonna tell you, you know, what uh, how Celsius is beating the bank, or you know, how this all works. So you you get paid, right? You put your money in a bank account. The bank takes your money and immediately lends it to me on my credit card. They pay you less than 1% okay. on your mm -hmm. deposit, and they charge me 25% on my credit card, okay. right? So they just do an introduction. Your money is lent to me. Mm -hmm. They keep 90% of the value or 95% of the value. So that, that is just a system that does not, should not work. Most of us, if our real estate broker or insurance broker charged us 90% of the value, we would never work with them. So I decided to do something about it, and I think... That is the killer, the, the application of basically eliminating the toll collector and creating a system that acts in our best interest uh, is the purpose of the blockchain. It's the purpose of cryptocurrencies. So Celsius Network enables you to deposit your coins, it enables you to lend them to someone else, and you get to keep 80% of the value. So instead of losing 90% of the value, you get to keep 80% of the value. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that's why I like it. I've <clears throat> I've already started to uh, move some of my coins over to Celsius because I'm like, wow, I don't really stake it or do anything else. It just kind of sits there. That's great. And um, yeah, it works okay. Now, I would not recommend you put in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into your Celsius wallet because, uh, you know, it is it is a hot wallet. So just be aware about that that prospect. So, I mean... I like Celsius. I like, I like Alex Mashinsky. I, he's just a, he's a dynamic guy. He was the, I guess they call him the grandfather of uh, voice over internet protocol or VOIP. And now he's going to, he's talking about, well, I did that uh, back when the internet was, uh, you know, just coming about. And now I'm going to do MOIP, which is money over internet protocol. And he just has this good vision. I like to see that. And there's very few CEOs out there that do the things that he does. So, I mean, if you have to bet on people, I would bet on this guy. Last up, and I'll make this quick. Taxes are coming up July 15th. It is July, what is it, July 9th? Oh, so we got six days or so. And uh, this was from Sheehan Chandrasekara. I've preached him on the channel before. He's a licensed CPA, uh, and, he's, and he, got, and he um, uh, writes for Forbes Crypto. And he said, here's a copy of the full statement of work, or SOW, sent out by the IRS to tax professionals. And he's just saying, look, um, they are getting geared up for this year to look at virtual currencies and cryptocurrencies and uh, what you actually have, because all that data that goes to the exchanges, uh, guess what? They all have that. So I've already filled it out. And if you need a company to work with, I recommend CryptoTrader.tax. In the description of every one of my video, there's going to be 20% off. It allows you to do your taxes. I did 2017, 18, and 19, all different trades, and there was over 500 of them. And it was, it was able to get done in less than 30 minutes. That's for me just learning the whole process. It's super simple. So uh, check that out. And that's really the big thing. So that's it. So thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. That's it for today's video. I want to say thanks to all my supporters. So for my level ones, I appreciate it. Um, uh, thank you so much. Level twos, I'll give you a shout out. All right, soft, win mullet. Myself, who else? Dave Plummer, Grant Sharman. Uh, Bruce Wood, Baking Benjamins, Noah Flippin Vegas, Martin Lewin. Michael Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Canuck, Tessie Ryosaki Positive, Truck, LLC, 
JC Durex, Nat Slack, John Miller, The Office, L. Merg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prosfrey, uh, EOS UK, whatever, AE and Hero Soap Company. And uh, just so you know, there's a join now button underneath. Um, these level twos, uh, this is, they pay a little bit extra and I give, I do a uh, shout out, but this is actually going away as of the end of this month. So I'm just gonna do random shouts out, shout outs. I think we got a lot more things to, to cover uh, moving forward, like scams, uh, like different things that could actually help you guys, like, uh, you know, Celsius network and uh, Voyager and, and different projects that are coming about. So every minute counts. I just want to, you know, move forward. So that's it for today. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.